This radio on introducing RayJ Wireless Controller Redundancy Technology is presented by RayJ Tech Team. The objective of this radio is to provide an overview of the virtual wireless controller technology and explain how it enhances the reliability and redundancy compared with HA technology. This radio covers the basic introduction to the redundancy feature and then we introduce the VAC technology including the basic concept and advantage of AC virtualization. Also, this radio will give more detail on explaining the mechanism of VAC function and configuration guidance for deployment. This role is tended to target anyone willing to learn about VJ access controller virtualization solution. This work can be shared externally to demo the VAC feature and setup. Let's start to the brief overview of redundancy features in VJ. In the past, before the virtualization came out, we used HA function for redundancy. In order to simplify the network design and increase the capability, reliability, and usability, VJ wireless involves into two different branches. One is the MACC platform, which uses the software structure, and the other one is what we are going to introduce, virtual access controller. Let's take a look at the wireless HA high available model. On this illustration, the AP will establish two camera tunnels with the master and slay AC at the same time. The maintenance cost will be increased with more redundancy is required because of three major disadvantages of HA function. Firstly, all configuration need to be the same on each controller members and it requires to type the same setting on each member manually. Secondly, multiple IP addresses are raised, which increase the maintenance cost. And hardware software resources are raised, including number of licenses, ARP MAC address capability, performance of data forwarding. So what are the benefits of VAC? With this new technology, we can virtualize multiple physical controllers into one single logic controller unit and increase the capability, manageability, and flexibility because VAC is a single logic device. The network design will be simplified. There are no extra L2 and L3 protocol between controller members. The VAC instance supports maximum A controller units on virtualization such as WS68 and 12, 68-16, M18K, M8600E WSED. And no additional devices are required which maximize the utilization of network equipment. VAC technology enhances the hardware controller capability as following. The amount of stations, APs, that virtual light can support will be extended by increasing hardware device as virtual members. In the network extension or migration scenario, the new controller can just plug in and run. It will take effect in real time without any downtime or interruption to the Wi-Fi service. Currently, the VAC consists of AM18K WSDD light card Unix, support up to 10K APs while a standalone controller support 2K APs at most. The next advanced feature is dynamic load balance. The VAC technology can achieve real-time dynamic load balance. Each virtual member will process controller plane and data plane at the same time. The dynamic load balance works like this. Let's say you have three APs which already got online on one physical hardware AC. By increasing hardware ACs into virtualization, the control and data forwarding will be banned to each virtual member accordingly. But only one logic AC needs to be configured and maintained in this network. Another valuable feature of virtualization technology is license sharing. Unlike the HA function, the license keys are shared in virtualization. Let's say you have three controllers and one has 1024 license and the others have 128 respectively. When these controllers are configured into virtualization, 
The maximum license number of VAC logic instance will be 1024 plus 128 plus 128 up to 1280. And APs will be equally balanced to different members because of the low balance features. In the business network, there will be a huge impact if the story is inaccessible or data is lost. And the VAC technology can also provide high reliability to assure the delivery of the data to the intended recipients. Forwarding service, including layer 3 routing protocol, layer 2 ARP and MAC address tables, and so on, will be dynamically backed up in each member. So service won't be interrupted even when one of controller is down. Similarly, license key in virtualization pool will be made for seven days to prevent the AP fall offline due to the license key inefficiency when the AP member is down. The next section will introduce the basic concepts in VAC. We defined couple concepts in VAC technology to make the lucid structure for learners. Domain ID. Domain ID is the value of VAC structure and is used to distinguish different VAC instances. And all AC members in VAC should use same domain ID. Device ID. Device ID is a unique value for VAC members. Each AP in VAC instance should be configured with unique device ID. In VAC mode, the interface number will be changed and represent different members of device. For example, the interface 0 slash 3 will cover into interface 1 slash 0 slash 3. And the value 1 is the device ID. Priority. Priority is a parameter to control which AC in virtualization instance will become the active role. The higher priority controller will be chosen as the active one during the VAC initial state, and it won't be end when the VAC is formed. VSL Virtual switching link is a particular link between AC members to transmit control packets. Standalone and virtual mode AC have two running modes, standalone and virtual. The controller is running a standalone by default. The operator needs to switch the working mode into virtual for virtualization. Let's go back and take a look at the VAC technology. From this illustration, we can see there are four major components in this demo. AP, code switch, hardware controller, and the other switch, optional switch. And let's focus on this AC first. The controller will perform labor discover and wall election through physical VSL on each virtual member on virtualization instance. The VSL provides real-time data and exception synchronization to increase the reliability. The VAC technology requires to use SAS-shape topology for VSL. Thus, if there are only two controllers in virtualization, the VSL can be directly connected without extra switch. But if there are more than three controllers in virtualization, it will waste three cables and six ports. And this is the reason why we recommend to use code switch or extra switch to provide VSL layer 2 forwarding. When the virtualization is formed, the virtual members and VSL link between them become operational. And we need to use the link aggregation control protocol. LACP to assure the cap web and the user data can be balanced to each virtual member. The VSL is configured with a unique port channel on each controller. During the conversation, the VAC neighbor detection and wall election will be performed under the VSL layer 2 switching. Therefore, the port which VSL link connect on each other switch need to be configured into a specific VLAN. And this VLAN should be only used for VSL to avoid layer 2 floating to the business network. Meanwhile, the MTU of layer 2 switch should be configured into 9216 to allow the large size of data frame across the port. For chassis switch 918K or S86E, the INITE interface can be used as VSL port directly connect to the BSED 9 car. 
In virtualization technology, we define three different roles of virtual members. Primary, backup, and slash. Each role in virtualization carry control service like AP management, wireless station management, web authentication, Doc1x authentication, and data forwarding, including layer 2 forwarding, rolling forwarding, cap web centralized forwarding. And the system management task will be handled by the primary controller. The backup controller is a backup chassis of primary. And this right virtualization can achieve simply switch over. Even one of the virtual members is done. The low bandwidth feature in VAC is based on link aggregation port between the uplink switch and VAC instance. What the operator needs to be noted is the aggregation port between the VAC and uplink switch is required after virtualization is covered. And the uplink switch on this diagram is code switch. Need to choose source, destination, IP based low bandwidth mode. Once the AP is trying to go online, the cap web tunnel and data will be balanced to different virtual members. The last section of this radio is configuration guideline, which demonstrates the setup of VAC. Before the implementation, please get following preparation. Firstly, panning IP addresses for AC. A VAC is regarded as an AC and only one cap web control IP address is required. Secondly, compare with the standalone AC. A VAC has VSL link, panel ports and switch for VSL link and data links. If the deployment environment is reconstructed, wireless configuration on multi-ACs including WLAN, AP group and AP configuration need to be combined. And the VAC configuration and standalone AC configuration cannot be multitasked. It is recommended that VAC should be reconfigured after form. After mode switching, the VAC will store standalone configuration. It is recommended that the configuration can be backed up manually. And please note that if a wireless network is newly deployed or a living wireless network is reconstructed, it is recommended that VAC can be configured before the cable connection. The corresponding port can be shut down. In this case, loop can be prevented. Step 1. VAC basis configuration. Select the domain ID and configure the priority for each VAC members. And it is recommended to use two ports on each AC config as the VSL port. Step 2. Config uplink on switch. Service point or ACs used to connect to uplink switch need to be added into the aggregation port. Co sharing of aggregation port is based on source destination IP addresses. The uplink switch may not be provided by UGA products and therefore needs to be configured based on actual commands. Step 3. MTU on VSL port. The MTU of VSL port needs to be configured to 9216 and it's recommended to use the specific VLAN for the layer 2 switching for VSL. 4. Switch to the VAC mode. After all those basic config is done, this manually back up the AC setting and AP config setting and switch the AC into virtual mode for virtualization. Step 5. Config aggregation port on VAC. After the virtualization is start, we need to config aggregation port on VAC as well. After all virtual members are in virtualization, we can use show virtual AC to verify the virtual AC status and show virtual AC topology to verify the topology status. And so interface data, we can see the interface name are renamed based on the device ID. And so virtual AC banner info, we can see the banner info based on AP and stations. And here are the key points on setting wireless virtualization. Thank you for watching. We hope this video is useful to understand the UAJ SS controller virtualization. For more information, please go to UAJ official website.